Welcome to this session of our training uh, as we continue to prepare for our upcoming mission trip to Jamaica. We want to just talk about some general heart issues, uh, kind of like establish a biblical foundation for why we do uh, what we do and then speak about some other practical things um, to expect um, on this mission trip and um, how we can respond to some of these things. I want to begin, however, by reading Matthew chapter 28. We'll read verse um, 18 uh, through 20. Uh, we call this section the Great Commission for a reason. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and uh, on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This then is the biblical foundation or warrant, if you may, um, that sends us into this short-term mission trip. Now really, whether it's a short-term or a long-term mission trip, um, uh, this is what sends us. Um, because this is the commission to the church. The commission to the church is that we go and make disciples. So then, the first thing that we'd love to consider with that text in mind is the fact that we call this a, a mission trip or a go trip, uh, but really, whose mission is it? So we want to acknowledge the fact that the mission belongs to God. You and I are key players in the accomplishment of this mission or this vision, we might say. God's vision is to take the gospel to the ends of the world. We see in Matthew, sorry, Acts 1 verse 8 uh, that the church and the gospel really began there in Jerusalem, but then uh, it would spread to Judea, to Samaria, and then the utmost parts of the world. And so that's God's intention. Now, how is this going to be done? God has chosen you and he has chosen me to be his vehicles, if you may, his conduits uh, through whom this message of the gospel will be taken to the ends of the earth uh, and this uh, vision of discipleship uh, will be accomplished. So then, first of all, it is God's mission. You and I have been granted the opportunity to participate in the work that God has set out to accomplish in the world. And what a marvelous opportunity we have. And that's the, the, that's the focus. That's the way in which we need to perceive of what we're doing, lest we think too much about ourselves, lest we think about the cost of our mission trip to, to us and how we had to raise funds or, or, or how we had to give up our vacation or how we had to go here or go there and suffer this and suffer that. Really, how is that in comparison to what Christ did for, for you and for me on the cross so that we can even have a relationship with him to begin with. And if we enjoy this relationship we have with him, this uh, salvation being so full and free, why wouldn't we want to go to the ends of the earth and to share this with others who also need to come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior? So it's God's mission. Uh, we have been invited to participate in this work, but it's God's mission. What then do we do? What's the main focus of why we're going and what we intend to do? Right here again from Matthew chapter 28, we see that the call, the mission of the church, central to the, the Great Commission, is making disciples. So our ultimate goal is to see people discipled. That is, to come to a closer walk and relationship with Jesus Christ. So then, we will go and we will share the gospel um, through various mediums, through various events, whether it's the VBS, whether it's a, uh, a Bible study, whether it's uh, um, uh, doing evangelism in the city square or showing a movie or through one-on-one -on -one conversation that will, that will come about as we go along the way. All of this is sharing the gospel, really wanting to see the unsaved come to relationship in Jesus Christ and wanting to see the saved grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's the mission of God, that is to make disciples. We do that through sharing the gospel with the unsaved, leading them to a, a relationship with Christ, and sharing the word of God, teaching the word of God, uh, so that those who are saved can mature in Jesus Christ, can grow in their walk with him. So we want to bear uh, uh, that in mind. Very, very central uh, to who we are 
and what we are about uh, the, to, to embark upon. The next thing as we go into a new culture or a different culture is to remember that there will be differences. Uh, people will look different than you do. Uh, people will speak different than you do. People may dress different than you do. Uh, people might eat uh, some, some, some food that might be a little bit different than the food that you would normally eat. So these are differences that we will encounter as we go into um, a, 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 a different culture. Now, uh, are these differences um, somehow, uh, uh, are we better than those we're going to minister to? Uh, do we know the best way to do something that we are trying to accomplish? Not necessarily. So we want to uh, avoid ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is a word that we use uh, in, in missiology or cross-cultural anthropology, uh, which suggests a person or a group of people who somehow thinks that they know better, that they're more superior to, they have the best way of doing anything or everything. So they go into a culture and they want to impose their methods of doing things on a different group of people because somehow they uh, uh, come with a better way of doing everything. Now we want to avoid that. Um, also when it comes to food, right? Again, it's different. Um, it is unique and we want to learn the language. Uh, we don't want to uh, embarrass ourselves uh, and and certainly you, you know to uh, uh, to to put people in an awkward place who try to share something with us they'll give us their best it might still taste different than that but again it tastes different it is it's just different it's not yucky it's not nasty it is not gross it's just different and so we want to say to our team uh, uh, prepare for these differences prepare to embrace these differences um, try things we're in a new culture try things um, and uh, if it doesn't agree with you for one reason or the other then certainly we can navigate away from it so if people have some sort of a uh, cultural or uh, or or a dietary uh, um, uh, uniqueness when well, certainly I would need to know it uh, let's say we had a vegetarian among us then I would need to know it uh, so that we can uh, prepare accordingly those who are going to be preparing our meals they're giving themselves to it uh, this is an act of service and an act of worship um, to the Lord and so we would want them to uh, we want to show our appreciation uh, for what will be prepared for us uh, so again expect some differences uh, Jamaican food yeah, is a bit spicy not necessarily hot but it can be hot uh, but spicy in terms of its its taste and see that's another cultural difference in America when we say something is spicy we generally mean it is hot like there's lots of pepper on it uh, but in the Jamaican culture, when we say something is spicy, we don't necessarily mean hot or peppery. We actually means it has lots of herbs. It has lots of spices on it. If we want to say, give me something that is um, spicy hot, we might say hot and spicy or make it red hot or very hot, not necessarily in terms of its temperature like a hot cup of tea, but that's just the way we speak uh, in Jamaica. So yes, there will be uh, some differences. So again, we say embrace those differences. Learn from those differences. What can you, how do you interpret it? Uh, what can you learn from it? What can you take away from it? What can you bring back with you to share about these unique experiences? So again, there will be differences. Um, look out for these differences and do your best to embrace these differences. Uh, some of these differences will, will change your life. Uh, the way people do things, the way you will see people live uh, may change your life. Conversations you have with individuals that seem to be so poor, having absolutely nothing, even a little child at five or six or seven years old might be able to answer certain questions about the Bible and speak to you about what they know about the Bible that might actually change your view of the Bible might even cause you to say, man, that child knows a little bit more than I do. How is that so? Well, again, we, as you embrace these new things that you'd learn, these new perspectives, uh, we're saying allow the Spirit of God to change you from the inside out and allow those changes to manifest themselves um, in your daily life. So expect changes and embrace those um, changes. Next, we want to say, look for opportunities for spiritual growth. We will have devotion just about every day. 
Now, I don't know who has been on any other mission trips before and whether uh, the leader of the trip has intentionally incorporated um, devotions. We will start our day with devotions, which means we might have to get up earlier um, to get it done. That's going to be a very huge part. Uh, there'll be times when I may call a young man, a young lady aside, other more mature members of our team might be sitting in a corner having a conversation, praying with a team member. Uh, it might be a leader of the church. Uh, who might spend some time uh, with a brother or a sister. Uh, again, there will be opportunities for spiritual growth. There will be lots of introspection that will take place. Uh, the Word of God is going to be taught. It, was, it will be preached. Um, it, this is not just for them, those people in that community that we're going to. The Word of God is for all of us. So every lesson, whether it's be VBS, whether it's our night of the crusade, every lesson will target you and me. And in fact, if we haven't targeted our own hearts first, if we haven't allowed the Spirit of God to minister to our own hearts first, then dare us to take this Word and go give it to them as if it's for them. No, the Word of God is for us. And we will encourage as well personal devotion time. There will be times, usually early in the morning before everybody gets up, I'll be up. Um, I'll find my little corner, my little quiet area, and I'll spend my time with the Lord. Uh, perhaps it might be during the lunch break uh, when we have some downtime. I might, you might find that I disappear. I'm not, I've not left the compound, whether it's where our accommodations where we're spending or, or, or nights, let's say, our home, or it's not the church area. I might, I might just disappear for a few minutes. Someone will know where I am. I'm gone off just to spend some time with the Lord in prayer, uh, study of His Word. Uh, but I need that time as well. And at times, it might be in the evenings as well, at nights when everything is quiet around and others have uh, uh, gone to bed. Uh, I might be up in the living room. I might be outside on a tree in a little area, um, you know, spending my time with the Lord. So it would be very important. And we are intentionally incorporating opportunities for spiritual growth. We are encouraging that. Young men and young women who are coming with us, I will make a point to spend time with them uh, to see that you are developing spiritually as well. There's never a time when I go and I serve anywhere, whether a mission trip or otherwise, go to pour out into people where I don't uh, leave myself uh, with a spiritual blessing and on a spiritual high. So again, expect those opportunities, look for those opportunities, uh, listen to the Spirit of God as He tries to do business with you on an area of your life that needs to change, that needs to be in greater conformity uh, with the Word and the will of God. So look for those, uh, facilitate those opportunities for spiritual growth, uh, uh, harness those opportunities you know, for, for spiritual development, they will occur. Um, again, this is how we will be organized. And so, um, next we want to talk about, uh, just this say, a can-do attitude. You know, on a mission trip, a mission trip, the experience can be, as we say, uh, it can be made or broken uh, by the team members. Uh, so, we want people, and we've I have intentionally prayed that God would bring alongside us people on this trip uh, who have a can-do attitude. That is to say, there might be things you are challenged to do that you've never done before. Don't just say, I can't do it, and walk away. Uh, my mom taught me to say, don't say you can't, say you will try. And so try, 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 try. This is a part of your own development, spiritually and practically. To be asked to do a task that you've never done before, to sit there and to spend some time trying to figure out how to get it done, or to seek some in, some help and instruction from uh, a brother or a sister there to come alongside you, to help you. Because now that you're able to learn how to do this and you do it, you've completed the task, that's something else in the bag that you now have mastered or you have now done and you can uh, continue to do until you come to a point where you say you have mastered that. And so we want a can-do attitude. Uh, we want people that's going to facilitate um, peace and harmony among the group. And I know of mission trips where people have just uh, fussed and bickered and fight at each other uh, for various things. Uh, I don't like this. I don't want to go. It's too early. I don't want to get up. I don't want to do devotions. No, no. Check your attitude at the door. Uh, do so from now. And if you find that this is going to be a problem with you, please let me know. All right. We need unity among the team and having a can-do attitude is a great way um, towards that. Next, let's spend a few minutes talking about communication. I simply will say, plan to communicate clearly, 
Uh, what I mean is we're going to an area where people will hear an accent that uh, some people, they don't hear on a daily basis. Yes, there are tourists that will come to the area, uh, usually during the summer for various ministries and, and activities. And so they're not totally new to, to Americans per se. But you might be asked to repeat yourself, uh, speak slowly. Uh, you will ask the Jamaicans to repeat themselves, to speak slowly. See, while English is our official language, uh, we do have a dialect. We call it Patwa. Patwa is really the, the equivalent of, of Ebonics. So in English, we would say, um, um, I'm going down to the shop. Uh, in Patwa, we would say, Mide go down at the shop. Now, it seems very fast that I'm rolling my tongue, but there are some words you can hear. You certainly can hear shop. And instead of I am, we say, Mide. Uh, or Mia. Uh, there are different ways to say it. And so if a child or an adult comes speaking in their comfort language, their heart language, which is Patois, and they totally forget that you are a tourist and you're not familiar with that, all you have to say, speak English, please, or please repeat that for me. Go slowly uh, so that we can understand. Because clear communication is very important. If you don't know what they're trying to say, they don't know what you're trying to say, then the message of what's being communicated will be lost. So don't be embarrassed if you have to ask someone to repeat themselves a few times. Don't be embarrassed if you are asked to repeat yourself a few times. The most important thing is that we have communicated, that we have communicated clearly. So again, the message that we intend to share has been shared and we, are, we understand each other and can move on. All right. So um, plan to uh, focus on clear uh, communication. As far as transporting items are concerned, people ask me every year, do you ship items? No, we don't ship items. We actually take all the ministry supplies. So this is what we do. We actually ask our team members, you know, to leave at least, you know, half of their large suitcase. You're allowed to check a free item, your carry-on, plus a personal item, maybe a laptop bag or purse or so on. Take that onto the aircraft for free. And then your large item, uh, $25 for that. Now we ask folks to leave at least half of that for ministry supplies. This is another way uh, we serve the Lord and serve um, the, the, the group. Now, if someone has a large suitcase, they don't think they're going to need it, let me know. Uh, we'll take that and uh, we'll fill it with supplies and we'll pay for it. Uh, but as you pack, I know particularly some of our ladies uh, can carry a little bit more things than the men do. Uh, but again, we are asking folks to leave space in their suitcase to carry ministry supplies. And it's for this reason why we ask the team to come together the Saturday before we leave for the mission trip, um, usually at our home, uh, where we have a time of prayer, we have a time of fellowship, we get to know the members of the team, and then we pack supplies. My house, our house is usually a mess uh, during the last couple of weeks because items are coming in. We're, we're purchasing stuff. We're shipping stuff to our home. And then the team comes and we put things in suitcases. Some suitcases are filled. Extra suitcases that we have, we'll ask persons to carry. So if you don't have a large suitcase, let me know. Or we have a few at home because we do this thing a, a, a couple of times. Uh, we'll lock it up. Um, if, if it's closed, uh, nothing else needs to be placed in it. We'll wait. We'll put a tag on it. You take it home. It's ready to go. Next time I see you, we'll be at, uh, pretty much at the airport. Some of you will be at church the following day. But that's how we transport our items. So please pray and plan accordingly. Um, uh, in terms of how to dress, um, just remember it's a tropical country. Uh, now, we're not going to be in Kingston. We'll pass through Kingston, but we're going to be on the northeast um, side of the island. It's just going to be a bit cool um, there, but cool is very relative when you're in Jamaica, when the temperature in the morning uh, can be 80 degrees and go up to 90, 92, 93 degrees. So pack mostly cotton stuff. Um, uh, pack uh, light colored clothes. Uh, you want to stay away from the black um, clothing. In terms of church, uh, Jamaicans, as poor as we are, we're just very formal for church. And so for men, we would say plan to wear a long sleeve shirt um, or a short sleeve shirt. Uh, uh, plan to wear a tie, uh, preferably. Um, if not, it's fine if you don't wear a tie. But if you can, uh, go the extra mile to wear a tie. Uh, but jeans and, 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 and um, shorts don't go very well there. Um, for the young ladies, obviously, very modest. Um, um, clothing uh, for church. As far as VBS is concerned, uh, jeans, um, uh, shorts, men, women, uh, usually down to our, our knee or thereabout uh, would be good to go for VBS. Uh, tall jeans, tall pants, slacks, whatever, that's fine. 
Um, but again, the best thing to do in terms of clothing is to pack things that are generally cotton, um, light colored um, garments, uh, again, to help with, um, with the heat. Um, so we will have another um, training session and we'll cover some more um, items there, uh, particularly security, which would be very, very important to us. Thank you for your time.